Hey everybody, it is Facebook Live time in Carolyn's stamping room. How are you going this morning? I am excited to be bringing you a cute little card with a fabulous stamp set that I saw and it reminded me of one that we used to have when I first started being a demonstrator, which is actually a also, a very long time ago, um, 10 years in fact, it is my 10th year anniversary of being a Stamping Up demonstrator next week, which I cannot believe I've been here for 10 years. Um, let me just make sure I'm in the right place making this video because as much as this is called family and friends, I'm not sure that my family and friends would be as interested in this video as you guys may be. <laughs> All right, let's get playing. I'm in the right spot. Fabulous. So the stamps that I'm using is called Family and Friends. It's in the Occasions catalog, which is this one here. And it is such a cute little set. Hey, Kathy. Hey, April. Welcome. 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 So when I got it, I had lots of plans and as usual, you know, it sits there for a little while while I think about it. Um, today we're going to be making a card, but I actually got this stamp set originally because I thought it would be such a fun stamp set to make for our family and friends. So um, just to get like some cute little white frames, photo frames, and on people's birthdays I could make little um, little presence of these photo frames with uh, pictures of their family and make the little people which you can kind of design to um, to kind of be caricatures of people's families which I thought was such a cute concept. Here in the catalogue they have kind of what I was thinking about doing. Gosh I'm bad at trying to load. So let me see. You see here they've got a little frame and then they've got the Smith family on it. I just thought, isn't that a cute, a cute idea, right? Like you could make some really sweet, pretty, um, you know, not super pricey little gifts for families for birthdays or anniversaries or weddings, you know, like really cute stuff like that. Just to really uh, extend the usefulness of your stamps. So it is called Family and Friends. It's in the Occasions catalogue. If you're looking to purchase it here in Australia, please hop over to my blog, carolynbenny.com. It's not an expensive stamp set. This is a $28 stamp set. Like, that's a good price. So let's see what I made. I made something that's pretty simple, but because I really wanted to focus on the technique of how you stamp with these little um, people. So here is my card that we're making today. It's just a really simple card on a white base. Um, and I've just popped on three little kiddos and a puppy dog. I have three boys, so this is not a representation of my family, but um, it is so cute and I don't know, I just think it's pretty cute because um, it's got like happy birthday. There's some, the sentiments are actually really clever that they've put with it. They've put a warm welcome. So you could use it for like somebody starting a job and like do a whole bunch of people and like a warm welcome to your workplace. Congratulations from all of us. Another one, my husband's work is often knitting like a card with a bunch of people on the front and then saying, you know, this is from all of us. Um, so the, the sentiments really are very useful and it's a super cute. There's so many different people you can make. This is just, this is just one version. Okay, so I'm going to flip you guys over and when I say that's just my camera, but it's the way I think about it. And hey, Carol from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome. Um, so I'm going to flip you guys over and show you how I've made, I've put together these little people. And we'll have a bit more of a look at the stamp set as well. So bear with me. Hold please while I turn you over. I'll be a second. Oh, I've got my camera facing a different direction. Oh, well. 
let's have a little bow peep. I've decided to do um, to do this card with watercolour pencils today, but seriously, you could make this with, you know, anything. Um, you could do um, with your blends, you could do with an aqua painter, uh, but I just thought, hey, it'd be fun to use my pencils. Okay, that's a little bow paint. All right, so here is the card that we're doing. I'm going to bring you in just a little bit closer. All right. So here's the card. Have a good look. I've just done a, a bit of a watercolour wash behind them and I'll show you how I did that. I've coloured them in with watercolour pencils. I, um, I'll share with you any tips I have on that. And I've used these little, um, these are little, I've had a mental blank, epoxy dots. I don't think these are available anymore. But you know, sometimes I mean I keep all of my stuff even when they're not when they're discontinued. Someone's going to tell me perhaps if they're still available. I did have a quick look last night, but um, yeah, I I'm not sure. But I'm sure you can find something in your stash or some sequins. I need to invest in some more sequins. I'm almost I'm out of sequins. I use a lot of sequins. All right, so let me show you how I've gone about making this card. How are you all today? I can see lots of lovely, beautiful people coming in. You like those people? Say hello as you're coming in. Feel we're all amongst friends here. Okay, so what um, I do, so I'll show you this little sort of plan. Often um, with these, I would really suggest that you plan out your card a little bit before you get going. Um, it, it does take a tiny bit of practice to get these people all lined up because what you'll see is that you actually get them in pieces. You get their hair and their bodies and their, you know, they're, they're all come in different sections. So you need to learn how to line them up so that the hair is touching the top of the, you know, the ears and, you know, it's all kind of coming together. But the good thing about this is that you can really change up your people quite a lot. So, you know, you could have, um, you know, jeans and a t-shirt with the long hair or um, a beard. Um, you can put a tie with your person, glasses. You really can make them exactly what you want them to be. Now I, you can see I've got on the front of my stamp set here, I've got, so this is the, the rest of the bits and pieces here that I'm not using. But the ones that I'm using, I've actually put and stuck on the front of my stamp case. And the reason why I do that is because these are, I need so, I need so many pieces to stamp all of my, my picture up because I've got four people and one puppy dog, I need to take them on and off the blocks. So I want those, and I need to use some bits over and over again. So I don't want to lose anything. So I'm just pop them on the front. And hey, Linda, how are you? And so I've got them really close, and I can see exactly what's going on. Uh, so that's all the bits I'm using today. So here with this one here just to give you a bit of a an idea of how I've gone about starting this is my um, kind of my scratch piece it's just on a piece of cardstock that I had and it's not I'm using watercolor paper to make our card today but I wanted to play out the spacing between the people and I wanted to just make sure that I had everything correct so I would suggest that you do do a bit of a crash test on a scrap piece of paper before you go on to your good piece of paper. Um, the thing I also do is I draw a line and if you can see uh, actually the people are not standing on top of the line 
they're standing just a little bit below and that way I can also make sure that they're sort of you know they're not floating in the air so I was kind of happy with that that layout so I'll show you now on the actual paper I'm using so I'm using some watercolor paper and I've cut it to just a little bit smaller than a regular card front size and I'm going to take a little ruler I tend to have um, a couple of rulers on hand sometimes it's this one but I actually my preference is the t-square ruler which I ordered this online but you can get them from um, you know decent craft or stationery shops I like this one because I can find you know it, it makes sure that I'm nice and square with my with my light and I really need this to be nice and square so I just want to draw a line I think that's good I've not made it too dark because I'm going to rub that out after I'm finished okay now the first little I think I, I, I want to start with kind of the middle person first so I'm going to do who should I do first I might do the um, let's see I might do this little fella first pop him on a little block I'm using stays on ink and you really have to make your stays on ink super juicy especially on watercolor paper because now I'm kind of off centering him because I'm giving a lot of time for that to stick there's our first little body now next dude now all of these are going to be kids you can definitely put some adults in there too I'm trying to remember where I put where I did some adults oh yeah here was a version that I did his neck's not actually attached to see I learned some things if you don't do it correctly their necks aren't attached to their bodies which is I'll show you how to avoid that what I would suggest that you do is you start from the bottom and work your way up so start with their bodies first I'm just popping back their bodies on my top of my stamp pad when I'm not using start with their bodies first make sure that they're not floating above the earth and that their heads will therefore line up with their bodies so there we go that one and let's do the little puppy there's a kitten as well and there's baby but the puppy is super cute let's do him you can sit here so they're cute little characters because the heads are bigger than the bodies. They shouldn't be. They're kind of a bit um, out of whack with as far as the heads and the bodies should be. Now, the next thing to do is the head. Now, this is a really bizarre stamp. And at first I thought it was headphones. But this is this is the bottom of their their heads their faces their chins I suppose and there's also headphones so it's confusing so this is the headphones that looks remarkably like this one so I was a little confused for a while but I finally worked it out so that is their chin and their ears so do that bit next And you, the good thing about photopolymer is that you can line up through the the, um, the acrylic block really easily. Isn't that cute? It's like their little heads are coming together, and their um, their heads are not floating 
in air if you go from the bottom and work your way up. Okay, I'm going to do the hair next. I like the way that the um, this girl's hair, it sits so beautifully on top of the shoulders. It's, the way these stamps work together is just so clever. Now this one here didn't stamp so well and I've got to tell you that occasionally happens. Um, and the best way I've found... Oh, you think it's a bald head? Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I have to see. Could be. Is to get this um, a stamping pen and just go over the lines. It's like a little journaling pen. And I found that to be really the best way. You could line it up in your Stamparatus each time, but I'm who has time for, for that when you're doing this kind of stuff. Okay. All right, so there's that one. Now let's do the little boy's hair. I think it was this one. And these ones are going to come just above his ears. Oh, cute. And last but not least, this one's very this one's very swishy. His hair. Hey Deb, how are you? Um, it reminds me of my middle son's hair. Okay. There we go. Adorable. Okay. Now, the eyes come separate as well. So you've got a few different versions. If you're going to do glasses, I'd suggest that you do them first. In my experience, it's much easier to line up the eyes kind of second and do the glasses like so. Okay. Oh, I keep trying to put my ink away. I'm not finished with you yet. Ink and some little faces. Faces, I think, are the trickiest thing to stamp. And they've done well with this because they've just kept it really simple. Oh, that's just what you pictured, Steph? Okay. They keep the, the, they've kept these little faces simple, which I like. And we might change to a different face for the oldest boy. There we go. His nose is a little different. Okay, I think that's good. Now, you, there is a few little embellishments too, which are kind of fun. This is some little stripes. And I'll bring you guys down a little bit so you can see. I'm almost out of shot. Okay. The good thing about these little people is that you can do them different each time. So these are just some little stripes that come. I didn't know what to do with them, so I had to research. Look, they can make little stripy outfits. So cute. So your little people <clears throat> can be you know, can be your family. They can look like your family. This does not look like my family because, like I said, I've got three little boys. But, um, you know, then again, it doesn't really matter either. You can make them look different. They don't have to be your family each time. So I'm just fixing up any spots that I thought I didn't stamp great. Now, the reason why this doesn't stamp as clear as it could is because it is watercolor paper so sometimes with watercolor paper because of those you know dent the kind of the undulating 
texture of it, it does need to be stamped a couple of times, which is why the Stamparatus is good for that kind of um, thing. But because there's so many pieces in the stamp set, I, I think it's just easy to go over it with a pen. All right, so there we go. That's our little people all finished. Now I wanted to use my pencils. So this is how, sometimes I just color directly on to um, a, a piece of cardstock and I've done that plenty of times before, but I wanted to show you how I watercolor with the pencils. There's a few different ways. This way is one that I, um, I really like. So you just want to have a piece of tissue or, or paper towel at hand. Let's bring that out a little bit. Um, a little bit of tissue, paper towel, aqua painter, and your Stampin' Up! watercolour pencils. And then I just take the tip of my aqua painter and run it on my watercolour pencil and take that directly to the watercolour paper, like so. So it's a really soft way of using that watercolour. And if you go over it again, you're going to get like a darker, darker layers, like so. So let's do a little bit more of that. We'll do the young man. Now, I thought I had a different, oh, there it is. So let's do the young man. I've got this spun ears. We can see the ones I go to. Old Olive. Doing him a old olive jumper. Now for the people in the States, um, Australians call sweaters jumpers. So that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I often get in trouble with my Australianisms. Alright, and now we've got little pants. I always go on about this, but this is the truth. I try and limit the colours I can I use in on my cards. Because you can I mean when you're doing a rainbow that's great, but you want to try and you know keep the colours down because it can just look too busy. So I think I've kept the colours or oh, if I said three or maybe five, five colours. Now this one is balmy blue. It is one of my favourite blues of all time and it's a in colour so it's not going to last forever. So if you like balmy blue like I do, oh, get it soon. And now I'll just, I'm really adding very little water to this. And I liked the idea of just adding a little bit of blue to the bottom of her dress just to tie in the colours. So they've all kind of got colours tied in. So I'm just going to, as I, on my, on my tissue here, as I'm wiping, I'm also squeezing ever so gently the water. So it's flushing the pencil off of the brush at the same time. And go back over where it's like a clean brush. Now, those are pretty much done, but you know, I can't leave good enough alone, so I tend to then go back over and darken and add some kind of darker colour to our people. Just makes them a little bit bolder. Even if you wanted to, you can add like a little bit of pencil like so and then kind of pull that colour out with your aqua painter. That's another way of using your watercolour pencils, like so. I, I do tend to use the aqua painter to pencil more when I, when I do it. Okay, so good morning, how are you? 
So what do you think about this? Do you use your um, watercolour pencils this way or do you do yours a different way? I'm really interested to know how you use your watercolour pencils. Here I'm using a little bit of Daffodil Delight. We're going to be... Oh, now I probably should have got rid of the green a little bit more. The blue, because his hair is now a tiny bit green. Just add... Um, yellow and then I really you love the watercolor pencils Deb yeah such a you know what and the good thing about watercolor pencils is if you're even going on a holiday um, if you're going um, camping or um, traveling and you don't you have you want to take something to busy yourself with to craft with but you don't have a lot of space. Watercolor pencils, I think, are a great, um, a great concept for that because they take up very little space. But you can do so much with them. A watercolor pencils and an aqua painter. Cut up a few card fronts and stamp a few images before you go, and you really you're flying. You can fulfill all your crafting requirements as well as you know not overpacking which my husband is always happy when I'm not overpacking so I'm just adding a little bit of extra color here I've just um, I used a little bit of the pumpkin pie on the oldest boy's hair and now I'm going to just add a little bit of El Espresso to our to our girl here. I might even come in and darken up under there with the pencil and pull that out like so. Alright, you're in the caravan now and you bought your watercolour pencils. Oh look, see, I, <laughs> I'm not spying on you Deb, I promise. Alright, now with the little puppy dog, I I kind of wanted him to mostly be white and how you can really make white look white but also not look like a blank piece of um, paper is just to use a little bit of grey around the edges and then for some reason that kind of makes the dog look white. I don't make the rules where this is concerned. I just can share. So just take a little bit of your going grey and go around the outside for your puppy. I'm going to give him a black nose, like so. I'm going to give our little fella some black shoes, but I'll leave a little highlight there. And our young lady, she's having some blue, just to tie in the blues again. Um, I have gone over the line a little bit there, so I'll just wipe that out. What else? Oh, a little bit of grey. I just wanted his shoes to stay mostly white, so I'm just popping a little bit of grey around the edge of his as well. Okay, so now I've got things pretty much, the most of the colouring done there, but I just wanted to now take, I haven't done their faces, but I'll do them in a minute. Um, Take our ruler and come back in with our marker pen. And now I'm just going to rule in some lines. I'm not going all the way to the stamped images, I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap. A few little. All right, so that's going to center, and you know, not have your people floating off. If you do that, I'm gonna let that dry for a second while I just finish off their faces. So here I've taken out my calypso coral. I really want to <clears throat> give them some rosy little cheeks, and I I think calypso coral is the best 
for that. I need some rosies. Like so. That is better. I think my Aquapager pen almost might be due for a new one. Even the puppy, even though I know it's fur, we've talked about this before, I do like to give the, the dogs, even the dogs, get some rosy cheeks. A little bit of pink in the ears and a pink tongue. And we're almost done. If you wanted to have their um, them stand their skin stand out a little bit, you could go with a Calypso Coral and go around the edges or you can pop a little bit of grey around the edges. I'm not going to get too invested in that because we're doing the uh, wash today. So once you made sure that your line is dry and it's not going to smudge, you can go back over with your eraser and get rid of any pencil that isn't where you want it to be. Like so. Okay, now a little bit of watercolour wash. I have used just my pencils again and I've used my aqua painter. I'm going to bring in some Coastal Cabana. Make sure it's nice and wet, your aqua painting brush. I'm not putting it over my paper because even I don't want to, you know, fling any colour on it. So now I'm just going to make sure I'm squeezing pretty firmly. And that's a bit dark for me, so I'm going to blot that. It's a good thing about watercolour, is that if you blocked it straight away, you can kind of get most of the colour off. So now I'm just not squeezing very much water out at all. Not coming super close to the people because I don't want to blend out their colours. Keeping my aqua painter moving so I don't get harsh drawing lines. Like so. So this is just from that one dab of the pencil. So I'm going to come back in and Bring a little bit more colour in on this side, like so. It will dry fainter, but that's kind of cute. What do you think? Well, it's so Stephanie is saying I'm always good with watercolour, but it's really this one isn't so tricky. Believe me, I'm. I wouldn't sell you wrong. There we go. I think that's good. I, I don't want to add, go too crazy. Now you can add the happy birthday sentiment like I did here, or you can leave it blank. I'm going to leave this one blank and see what I need. But the happy birthday, definitely use your Stamparatus for lining up the happy birthday or the congratulations or that kind of thing. I wanted to do a border, but I didn't want to get too busy. I wanted to leave these um, the real focal point. So I'll show you how I've done this little border. I actually, again, wanted to tie in a colour that I've already used. And the pink, I've really used nowhere else. So I wanted this to have its kind of somewhere else that it was on the card. So the border was the, the natural idea so I'm just again touching the watercolor pencil giving it a lot of color on the bottom and then take the edge of your paper and just randomly go oops, a bit too much go around the edge like so I don't want to squeeze a little bit of water Take the colour around 
like so, a bit more. And like so. And like so, there we go. You can even add a little bit like that. And when that dries, it'll just be a little bit of something, but it won't be too much. Just a little bit of extra colour. Now let's pop on some of these little epoxy um, dots. As I said, I don't think that these are available anymore, so it's a bit naughty of me to use. But they're so cute. So let's, and they kind of look like bubbles. Like bubbles that the, the kids have been blowing some bubbles. So, well, cute. And kind of just add a little bit of extra fun. So maybe sequins, that kind of thing. I like odd numbers. So, what are we up to? One, two, three, four. That's kind of cute. Once they've dried, you can then add a little bit of the um, Wink of Stella. Gosh, I almost lost my train of thought there. I've just popped it on his clothes and this one just to add like a little bit of interest. It's really hard to pick this up on the camera. But, um, and then just his little ears in here, his tongue, cheeks, maybe especially his nose, like so. Let's pop him on the card base. And I did trim it down just a little bit, so we would be able to have that border around the, um, this piece of card, this piece of watercolour, so we can see the white. It would make that pink pop out a bit more as well. There we go. Turn him upside down. Make sure the glue's on there nice and tight. So there we go. That's how I put together those little people. And that's the original one as well so but again oh look this I did the, a little bit different the colors are a little bit every time you're gonna do a little bit different that's just the nature of this beast but I hope you enjoyed that um, cute you can make lots and lots of different um different people with that and uh, it's a stamp set that i don't know has been given a lot of love out of this catalog and it's sad because it's just adorable and i think that you're going to use it for such a long time so i hope you enjoyed that little tutorial today make sure you share it or give me some comments or some love if you did and um i hope that you have a fabulous weekend and if it's a long weekend for you in Adelaide, please enjoy it. Oh, if you are in Adelaide or in South Australia and you're interested in attending my stamping retreat, which is on the 5th to the 7th of April next month, please let me know really soon. You need to book in really soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, just a lovely weekend of free stamping. I'll be doing a couple of classes. Um, so please book in for that. Send me a direct message. Um, I'll give you any information you would like to know about that. I've got a few places left, but I am going to have to cap it uh, because just for space. So please um, tell, tell your friends, come along, have a lovely you know weekend away doing some crafting it could be stamping it could be other crafting or you could just sit and read a book on your own and come down for lovely meals um 
but um, it's a beautiful venue as well. All right, my friends, I will see you again, hopefully next Friday, for another Facebook Live. Okay?